I wasn't particularly interested in competing with the physics departments in Australia. I was interested in competing on the world stage. Something had to be done in Australia so that we could train and retain our own best students and inveigle some of our best young people who are overseas to return to this country. Well, I knew that Sydney had gone through a rather turbulent time after the war, that it was without a, a head of the school here. So I was off overseas, and then I was going to decide where, where I would take a, take a position. The vice chancellor, Stephen Roberts, seemed to have a lot of faith in me, and maybe he thought I could drink scotch as well as he could. So that's how I happened to come here. The world was at my feet at that time. There was a lot of opposition to any new idea. Even staff within the School of Physics didn't, didn't agree with me and with Dr. John Blatt that we should need an electronic computer. So I knew it was very important that we have such a gadget in Australia. I also realized that it could play an amazingly important role in many, many fields. Well, the first thing was to get the blueprints of the fastest computer in, in the world. And then the next question was to they get the necessary funding, and that meant trying to convince the people of its importance. It was the first time that a dinner was allowed to be held in the Great Hall of the University. Georgie Faulkner had decided to give 50,000 pounds. State of New South Wales had decided to give 50,000 pounds. Artie Fadden gets up. I undertake on behalf of the Commonwealth Government to equal the grant from New South Wales. Just wonderful, imagine. When I uh, decided to develop the technology for radio tracking, I understood that I would need an animal which would put extreme pressure environmentally on any of the scientific instrumentation you had. And that was in the beginning of a 17-year study to map and chart the 100 tidal river systems of Northern Australia and study its crocodile populations, thereby elucidating the population dynamics of the species. But a year later, in about 72, Rita comes in, my secretary, and says, Bob is here to see you, Professor May. And here they were, offering our professor of theoretical physics at Sydney the chairmanship of the biology department at Princeton University. I said, Bob, get out of here and get over there, which he did. I decided we should do something of, of importance in the energy field. So I then established a solar energy laboratory here in the School of Physics. We had made an important breakthrough, and we had small grants, but we were running out of money. I came up to my room, and there was a letter in there. University of Sydney, I'm sorry to have to inform you that your grant for solar energy is hereby terminated, and will cease on the 31st of December. I just was fainted. I got back here to the school. I said, is there anything interesting? Oh, I said, there's one, one here from the of foreign affairs. And I got on the phone to DFAT and I said, man, are we interested? We're desperate. He says, well, he's been approached by His Royal Highness Prince Nawaf. I then had to meet Nawaf and his staff at the Premier's office. And His Royal Highness says, uh, Professor, my people looked at this and would like to help you. What is required? And I said, five million dollars, Your Excellency. He says, thank you, Professor. We'll look at it. Of course, two days later, I got the news, the five million dollars. Made me determined more than ever that I had to succeed. You had to succeed. Each time it was a all or nothing at all. And that made it all the more important that I win. And I did. <laughs>